Hello, how nice to see you again. Today is going to be the last day we're covering the topic of cell biology. I think that we're going to use today's exercise as a means of reviewing all the terminology that we've studied until now. And um, you will also notice that I have left some blanks in the first part of the speech. It is like a fill the gap exercise. And I've done so because I think it's good for you to see whether you have learned enough about the topic, you can complete the missing information, but also what is more important is whether you are able to keep your cool, your focus and your attention, which I think I said before. So let's go ahead and see what happens. And I'm going to start now. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues, I would first of all like to say that it is a great pleasure to be here in Spain. Believe it or not, it is my first visit to the Iberian Peninsula, and I can tell you that I'm really looking forward to doing some sightseeing after the conference. If you'll allow me, this morning I'm going to cover the topic of cell biology, describing what a cell is, the parts of the and its functions. By now, we all know that a cell is the basic of life, the unit of a living organism. However, it is made up of many even, each with its own function. Human vary in size, but I can say that all are quite small. Human cells have a surface membrane called the cell that holds the contents together. It is required because for to maintain their internal biochemical reactions, they must maintain a stable internal. However, this membrane is not just a sac enveloping and protecting the cell. It also has receptors that identify the cell to other these react to substances produced in the body and to drugs the body. Receptors can also initiate a signaling cascade or chemical that induces growth, division and death or opens membrane channels. An example of this is when insulin binds to receptors on the cell membrane to maintain appropriate blood levels and to allow glucose to enter. Now that we know what a cell is, we are going to focus on the two major compartments of the, the cytoplasm and the nucleus. The is a semi-fluid substance of a cell that is external to the nuclear and internal to the cellular membrane. Please note that it contains, that consume and transform energy and perform the cell's functions. Another feature of the cytoplasm is that it contains all the organelles. We have the mitochondria, which are the sites of energy production through ATP, adenosine triphosphate synthesis. They also, calcium, for cell signaling activities, generate heat and cell growth and death. They are typically in shape. Then we have the endoplasmic reticulum, a continuous membrane system in eukaryotic cells that an important role in the biosynthesis processing and transport of proteins and lipids, as it the site of lipid and protein synthesis. The Golgi, the site where proteins are modified, packaged and sorted in for transport to their cellular destinations. And it is in charge of absorption of compounds, 
formation of secretory vesicles and secretion, helps in enzyme formation, it is responsible for the production of hormones, storage of protein, formation of acrosome, formation of intracellular crystals, milk protein droplet formation, formation of plant cell walls, glycoprotein secretion. We also have lysosomes and peroxisomes like we saw in our first lecture which are sacs of digestive enzymes that carry out the intracellular digestion of macromolecules such as lipids and proteins. The cytoskeleton, sorry, the cytoskeleton, the cytoskeleton, a network of protein fibers that give shape and support to the cell, and cytosome, the fluid mass that surrounds the various organelles. The nucleus contains the cell's genetic material and the structures that control cell division and reproduction. It is a highly specialized organelle that serves as the information and administrative center of the cell. If anything is happening in the cell, I can assure you that the nucleus knows about it. It is just like the cell's brain, helping to control eating, movement and reproduction so just imagine how important it is. But where is the nucleus? Though you may think it has a defined, permanent and stable location, that is not at all the case. It is usually a big, dark spot somewhere in the middle of all the cytoplasm. You probably won't find it near the edge of a cell because that might be a dangerous place for the nucleus to be. The key functions of the nucleus are to control cell growth and cell multiplication. This involves regulating gene expression, initiating cellular reproduction and storing genetic material necessary for all of these tasks. In order for a nucleus to carry out important reproductive roles and other cell activities, it requires proteins and ribosomes. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found my presentation interesting. My aim today was to highlight the importance of a tiny unit in the human body, the cell. I hope I was clear and that you have enjoyed the presentation as much as I have enjoyed giving it. Thank you very much for your attention.